Exploration of the ulnar nerve within the Guyans Canal. Be aware of the complex anatomy. Jean Casimir Felix Guyan described the ulnar tunnel at the wrist in 1861. The French surgeon observed what he described as petite lobules appearing on the palmar aspect of his own wrist when applying pressure to the hypothena eminence. Intrigued by this discovery, Guyan studied the anatomical dissection of the wrist. He was the first to provide an anatomical description of the ulnar tunnel and its contents, from which he believed those fat lobules to have protruded. His description of the ulnar tunnel was first presented and published in the Bulletin de la Société de Anatomique de Paris in 1861. From 1861 to 1953, numerous studies refined the anatomic description of the ulnar tunnel, but it was not until 1953 that the first piece of English literature appeared to link Guyan to the ulnar tunnel. It has since received the eponym Guyan Canal. A stamp issued by France in 1979 in honor of Guyon. Reproduced from Felix Guyon 1831 to 1920, Haas, LF, Volume 74, page 698, 2003, with permission from BMJ Publishing Group Limited. As more studies were conducted on the anatomy of the ulnar tunnel, an additional tunnel containing the deep branch of the ulnar nerve was discovered distal to the ulnar tunnel, the Pisahamet hiatus. The study of the anatomy of these two tunnels has led to a better understanding of how pathoanatomy may lead to compression of the ulnar nerve at the wrist joint. Approach the ulnar nerve can be explored through a volar approach, which is located 1 to 2 cm more medially than the typical approaches for open release of the carpal tunnel. A consideration in planning the skin incision is the location of the palmar cutaneous branch of the ulnar nerve. Although this nerve was found to be present in only 25% in previous cadaveric studies, injury to it can lead to painful neuromas. Approach, the ideal incision should be located in the internervous plane between the palmar cutaneous branch of the ulna and median nerve. Unfortunately, cadaveric studies have identified that there is not such a plane. This plane is innervated by the nerve of Henel, the nerve of the ulna artery, and multiple ulna cutaneous branches. Therefore, the dissection of the skin and subcutaneous tissue should be performed carefully, possibly under loop magnification, preserving any emerging cutaneous branches. Dissection. Anatomic landmarks are the pisiform, the hook of the haemate, and the hypothena eminence. The typical incision is curvilinear in shape with the distal limb following the radial limb of the hypothena eminence and the proximal limb extending on the volar ulna part of the forearm. The wrist crease should not be crossed longitudinally, but rather in an angle of 60 degrees to avoid skin contractures. The total length of the incision is about 6 to 8 centimeters centered over the wrist crease. Figure. Incisions for the exploration of the ulnar nerve. At the level of the wrist, the incisions pass radial to the pisiform and ulna to the hook of the haemate. Mori BF, Mori MC. Master Techniques in Orthopedic Surgery, Relevant Surgical Exposures, Second Edition. In Master Techniques in Orthopedic Surgery, Relevant Surgical Exposures. Walters Clubber Health. 2018. P. 11 to 17.
The ulnar nerve and artery can be easily identified in the proximal part of the incision where they lie on the lateral surface of the tendon of the FCU figure. They can be traced easily distally incising all tissues more superficial to these structures. The dissection of the subcutaneous fat should be performed bluntly in order to avoid injury to any cutaneous branches. The palmaris brevis muscle is elevated slightly only and the volar carpal ligament and pisahamate ligament are incised resulting in a complete decompression of the Guyans canal. The two branches of the ulnar nerve at the level of the pisiform are identified. Figure The ulnar artery, white arrow, and the ulnar nerve, black arrow are identified at the radial margin of the flexor carpi ulnaris tendon. The ulnar nerve and artery can be easily identified in the proximal part of the incision where they lie on the lateral surface of the tendon of the FCU figure. They can be traced easily distally incising all tissues more superficial to these structures. The dissection of the subcutaneous fat should be performed bluntly in order to avoid injury to any cutaneous branches. The palmaris brevis muscle is elevated slightly only and the volar carpal ligament and pisahamate ligament are incised resulting in a complete decompression of the Guyans canal. The two branches of the ulnar nerve at the level of the pisiform are identified. Figure. The ulnar artery, white arrow, and the ulnar nerve, black arrow, are identified at the radial margin of the flexor carpi ulnaris tendon. The motor branch is more dorsal and more medial at the level of the bifurcation. It can be traced beneath the fibrous arch of the hypothenar muscles formed between the abductor digiti minimi and the flexor digiti minimi, through the muscle mass of the opponens digiti minimi and around the hook of the haemate. A careful exploration of the floor of the distal ulna tunnel is performed looking for any pathology like ganglions, fibrous bands, anomalous muscle masses, fractures of the hook of the haemate, and vascular anisms. Mori BF, Mori MC. Master Techniques in Orthopedic Surgery, Relevant Surgical Exposures, Second Edition. In Master Techniques in Orthopedic Surgery, Relevant Surgical Exposures. Walters Clubber Health. 2018. P. 11 to 17. The tourniquet should be deflated before closure of the wound and the ulnar artery, and its branches should be examined for any injury. Thorough hemostasis should be achieved since a postoperative hematoma can result in compression neuropathy of the ulnar nerve. An alternative surgical approach is through an open carpal tunnel syndrome incision extending slightly more proximally and distally. The ulnar nerve and artery are located on the volar medial surface of the transverse carpal ligament and can be identified tracing the superficial palmar arch proximally. Several hand surgeons prefer to decompress the Guyans canal and the carpal tunnel simultaneously. Anatomy of the ulnar nerve in Guyans Canal Around the pisiform the ulnar nerve divides into two branches, the superficial and the deep branch. The superficial branch gives immediately after the bifurcation motor branches to the palmaris brevis muscle and becomes purely sensory. It continues its course distally deep and medial to the ulnar artery providing sensory supply to the small finger and the ulnar side of the ring finger. The deep branch of the ulnar nerve bifurcation is purely motor and supplies the hypothenar muscles, all the interossei, the medial two lumbricals, and the adductor pollicis. Photograph 
The deep rotor branch of the ulnar nerve passes under the fibrous arch of the hypothenar muscles ulnar to the hook of the hamate. P. Pisiform, M. Motor branch, SBA, ulnar branch to superficial palmar arch, FA, fibrous arch of the hypothenar muscles, S. One of the sensory branches of the ulnar nerve. The motor part of the ulnar nerve is located dorsally in the ulnar nerve at the level of the distal forearm and emerges from the nerve on the dorsal medial surface. The motor branch leaves the tunnel and passes beneath the fibrous arch of the hypothenar muscles and enters the interval between the abductor digiti minimi and flexor digiti muscles. It pierces the opponent's digiti minimi and curves radially and dorsally around the distal part of the hook of the hamate, lying on the floor of the carpal tunnel. Figure. Photograph. The deep motor branch of the ulnar nerve passes under the fibrous arch of the hypothenar muscles ulnar to the hook of the hamate. P. Pisiform, M. Motor branch, SBA, ulnar branch to superficial palmar arch, FA, fibrous arch of the hypothenar muscles, S. One of the sensory branches of the ulnar nerve. Compared to the carpal tunnel syndrome, ulnar tunnel syndrome is less common because the space within the Guyon's canal is much more yielding. Compression within the canal can produce motor or sensory or combined motor and sensory symptoms. The Guyon's canal can be divided in three zones to allow more accurate localization of the pathology of the compression in respect to the neurological symptoms. Photograph. The deep motor branch of the ulnar nerve passes under the fibrous arch of the hypothenar muscles ulnar to the hook of the hamate. P. Pisiform, M. Motor branch, SBA, ulnar branch to superficial palmar arch, FA, fibrous arch of the hypothenar muscles, S. One of the sensory branches of the ulnar nerve. Zone 1 is the most proximal and is bounded palmarly and radially by the volar carpal ligament, medially by the SCU and the pisiform, and dorsally by the transverse carpal ligament. This region includes both the sensory and the motor branches of the ulnar nerve, therefore, compression in the region results in combined motor and sensory deficits. Compressions within this region are usually produced by fractures of the hook of the hamate and ganglions, figure. Photograph. Zone 1 of the ulnar tunnel as described by Gross and Gelberman, asterisk. Note the neurovascular bundle. Zone 1 is the most proximal and is bounded palmarly and radially by the volar carpal ligament, medially by the FCU and the pisiform, and dorsally by the transverse carpal ligament. This region includes both the sensory and the motor branches of the ulnar nerve, therefore, compression in the region results in combined motor and sensory deficits. Compressions within this region are usually produced by fractures of the hook of the hamate and ganglions, figure 1. Zone 2 is bounded palmarly by the palmaris brevis muscle and the fibrous arch of the hypothenar muscles dorsally by the pisiform and hamate ligaments and the opponens digiti minimi, medially by the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve and the abductor digiti minimi, and laterally by the transverse carpal ligament, flexor digiti minimi, and the hook of the hamate. This region surrounds the motor branch of the ulnar nerve and compression within this region results in motor symptoms. Ganglions and fractures of the hook of the hamate can produce compression within this region, as well as anomalous intrinsic muscles within the canal, figure. Photograph. Demonstrates the entrance to zone 2 of the ulnar tunnel in which the nerve passes under the palmar brevis muscle providing innovation to the muscle, asterisk. White arrow, ulnar artery, black arrow, 
ulnar nerve. Zone 3 is bounded palmarly by the ulnar artery and the palmaris brevis muscle, dorsally by the hypothenar fascia, laterally by the motor branch of the ulnar nerve, and medially by the abductor digiti minimi muscle. This region surrounds the superficial branches of the ulnar nerve, and compression within this region produces exclusively sensory symptoms. Figure 119. The most frequent causes of compression within this region are synovial inflammation, vascular lesions of the ulnar artery, thrombosis, aneurysm, or pseudoaneurysm, and anomalous size and location of abductor digiti minimi. Photograph. The ulnar nerve passes over the pisohamate and pisometacarpal ligaments which form the floor of the tunnel. Note the branches which supply the hypothenar muscles. The asterisk marks the nerve bifurcation into the deep motor branch, M, and the superficial sensory branches. P, pisiform, FCU, flexor carpi ulnaris, white arrow, ulnar artery, black arrow, ulnar nerve, SBA, ulnar branch to superficial palmar arch, SRF, sensory branch to ulnar side of ring finger and radial side of the small finger, SSF, sensory branch to the ulnar surface of the small finger, MPV, motor branches to the palmaris brevis muscle. Photograph. The ulnar nerve passes over the pisohamate and pisometacarpal ligaments which form the floor of the tunnel. Note the branches which supply the hypothenar muscles. The asterisk marks the nerve bifurcation into the deep motor branch, M, and the superficial sensory branches. P, pisiform, FCU, flexor carpi ulnaris, white arrow, ulnar artery, black arrow, ulnar nerve, SBA, ulnar branch to superficial palmar arch, SRF, Sensory branch to on the side of ring finger and radial side of the small finger, SSF, sensory branch to the on the surface of the small finger, MPV, motor branches to the palmaris brevis muscle. I would like to thank Professor Jihan Tetik whom contributed my orthopedic hand surgery knowledge and changed my life. Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.